That 11, that 11 page sentence in Telegraph Avenue. Thank you. Um, what inspired you to write it? What obstacles did you face along the way? <laughs> uh, well, periods. That was the, those were the big obstacles. Um, if you haven't read that, that, that book, I won't assume everyone's read that book, so I'll, try, I'll keep it short, but that book has a lot of characters, it has a lot of plot lines, um, they're kind of all going at the same time, and around the midpoint of the book, sort of all the elements are in play in the sense that the, the son that one character has never recognized or really acknowledged that he has has returned, and the record stores, the threat to the existence of this record store is clear, and to the midwifery practice, everything's kind of going, and I think I just had a sort of authorial moment of like, where, where is everybody? How's everyone doing? What state are they in? Who's, and various people have moved out on their husbands and so on. So I, I had this urge to assess the state of my characters, and I, had, I think I just probably had this initially an impulse to um, wish I could almost do a, um, you know, like a Robert Altman style kind of tracking shot, uh, you know, a single continuous shot where I checked in on all the characters and just that initial thought led me very quickly to realize I already had a parrot in this book, um, uh, a, a parrot named 58 and, um, and it just seemed to me like I was already thinking bird's eye view and it all just came together and I thought, okay, I'm just gonna have this parrot sort of fly over all my characters in an attempt to escape, um, a successful attempt to escape, I might add, and, um, and just let the parrot sort of stitch all the characters together. And because I was thinking of that continuous, that tracking shot kind of thing, you know, opening of um, Touch of Evil or uh, that kind of thing, um, I just thought, okay, I'll try to do a tracking shot in a sentence by not cutting. Um, and um, it seemed like it would be a fun thing to try to do. I've always enjoyed really long sentences. Of course, you know, the, like the last sentence in Ulysses, uh, which is one of my favorite books, was a big inspiration to me, the Molly Bloom soliloquy sentence, which I think is like four sentences. Um, William Faulkner tried it. I don't really like his really long sentence in The Bear, I think it is. Um, but still. Um, and yeah, no, periods were the thing. I kept, I had made this, I set myself the further challenge of not leaning too heavily on semicolons as fake periods. <laughs> um, and so I, 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 there are semicolons, but there are only a few, maybe four or five of them in that whole 11 page sentence. So, and I, but I also wanted, I didn't want the reader to get so lost in clauses separated by commas. So, um, you know, I think the most, I, there are a lot of people out there that didn't enjoy reading that a long sentence, but um, I ignored them. Um, <laughs> and I look at the number, of a lot of people who told me they didn't even notice that was one sentence until somebody told them about it. And then they're like, no, that's not right. My book had proper punctuation. And then like go back and they see that. Um, 